I've hit Challenger for support in Season 14 and I wanted to share some important tips and tricks and good habits that I feel like gave me an edge in my climb. This will be a follow up to my macro videos so I won't go over any of the same topics. All the things that I talk about in those videos still hold true and are super important so if you haven't checked it out I'd highly recommend it. Here are the topics that I will cover in this video. I think a lot of support players know these concepts exist but don't really think about it too much. Once you understand the best approach to these ideas and why it matters you'll be able to think and apply them actively in your matches. I guarantee you that you will become a better player and have a lot more awareness in your games after picking up a lot of these habits. That's enough yapping, let's jump right in. A lot of support players tend to mindlessly use their support stacks, but this mechanic actually has a lot of depth. World Atlas can store 3 charges and will give you 30 or 28 gold if you hit an enemy depending on if you're melee or ranged. It also executes minions below 50% or 30% just depending on if you're melee or ranged and will give you a flat 20 gold regardless of it being a caster or a cannon. The best way of using this item is to always have a stack charging and to tastefully use both portions of the damage and execute. You want to hit your enemies to get more gold most of the time but you should also use charges to execute minions during appropriate scenarios. The better you are at managing waves the better you will be able to utilize the execute portion of the item. A really easy example would be this scenario where you get a double kill bot and you want to push in the wave but you are low and you don't know where the enemy jungle is. I used the execution portion pretty poorly on the cannon because it was already low but you get the idea. You would use the execute portion during this part because you have a small window to do it and you are unsafe. Moving on to another example, we are pushing bot here and we see their mid jungle top on the top side of the map. I think a lot of players would use their stack on this cannon, but this is a waste because there's no urgency to push in the wave. I hit the minions to push faster, but I make sure to stop autoing after they get too low because I'm saving my stacks for the tower. These small interactions with world atlas makes a huge difference in how fast you get your support items, so be very mindful on how you use your stacks. Another very underutilized mechanic of world atlas is maximizing the net gold you can get. Once you hit a thousand stacks and go out of combat, your item upgrades the bounty of worlds. You can actually manipulate the item so that the charges keep stacking if you are close to the 1k threshold. Try to look for opportunities to extend being in combat. If you didn't know, you enter combat if a champion is damaging or taking damage from an enemy unit. You'll stay in the state 5 seconds after taking that action. You can milk the item for a bit more and that can be the difference between finishing an item. Enough about the world atlas, let's talk about the best wards for laning phase. This changes depending on whether or not you're blue or red side, if you have lane prio, or if you're jungle is playing your side of the map, but for example sake, let's just assume the lanes are even and it will bounce back and forth. If you're on blue side, these are generally the best wards you can have. It covers all possible gank angles, except for 3 routes which is entering the top side of the jungle through mid and taking blast cones to enter the river. You don't have to worry too much about the blast cone gank because it's pretty unreliable as it only spawns between 9 and 9.30 and the respawn timer is between 5.5 and, and 6.5 and minutes. Enemy would also have to know exactly where your wards are and dodge vision like those scenes where the main character is dodging lasers in a narrow hall. You can actually deny the gank through your topside jungle if you control ward the bush at the entrance, but it's better to have a control in your try to set up for your jungle. If you don't have a pink, you realistically only have to respect the possibility of a gank through your topside jungle. If you don't have any vision mid and enemies are MIA, just play back. Your team should also be using their wards to cover all the blind spots, so you should be pretty safe from ganks. Right team? Team? Moving on to red side, here are the best general wards you can throw down. This side is shaped in a way where there's actually no pockets you can get ganked from with this ward setup except for the blast cone over the wall. Same deal as blue side though, it's not reliable and if you throw a control ward in pixel or try, you'll most likely spot the enemy. I want to emphasize again that these are very general setups and that the best places to ward changes based on game state. For example, on this red side game, I can't go for my ward setup at all because we have no prio against Varus Karma and their jungler was playing bot side most of the game. If I were to walk out to try to get vision, it would be very dangerous because I could run into the enemy jungle and the enemy is perma pushing every wave so they can dive my AD carry. So the best wards in this case is to ward try, get lane bush, and put a ward where I can see the enemy rotate. It's a lot more defensive and it makes a lot of sense in this context because we are just trying not to die. Another example is a variation of the blue side ward setup where we have a lot of prio bot and our jungle is playing for bot side. Instead of dropping a ward on their side try bush, I drop it across the wall where I can see their blue and grom. This sets up for a potential invade and I was able to walk up here because we have a big wave crashing at their tower and I hit the vision orb to confirm I'll be safe. You can create plays like this with the right ward setups and conditions. Being able to identify what conditions to set up for what wards can be hard and I think it's one of the biggest hurdles specifically for diamond players that are struggling to climb the masters. Now that we have a general understanding of what good wards should be, let's talk about when is a good time to go ward. I see a lot of lower level players go ward randomly when they feel like it, but a good rule of thumb is to go when it's safe and your AD carry won't get zoned off the wave. 
Generally, that is after you push in the wave. This way, you are not missing out on EXP and your ADC can farm. Speaking of ADCs getting zoned off minions, let's answer one of the most asked questions of Season 14. Should you rotate to grubs every time? The short answer is that like anything in League, it depends, but I do think grubs are one of the most overrated objectives and there are only a small amount of times when it makes sense to go. A lot of support players tend to rotate to grubs and completely throw their lane state because their ADC gets dove or zoned off one and a half to two waves. To rotate to grubs, you need very specific conditions and you need to be very delicate with how you do it. The conditions to rotate is that you need to have shoved in a decent sized wave to the enemy tower, have tier 2 boots, and your jungler needs to be pathing towards the grubs as you are walking. I personally only really like rotating to grubs if I'm playing a support that has a passive or ability that gives me a lot of movement speed like Bard or Janna, but you can still go if the first conditions are met. Generally, that rules out rotating for the first grub spawn at 5 minutes because you won't have tier 2 boots if you are even in lane. If you do meet those conditions and rotate to grubs, try not to show yourself to the enemy and assess if you need to actually stay or not. If you know the enemy won't contest grubs, go back to bot lane as soon as possible so you can make it back in time when the wave is bouncing away from your AD carry. I didn't stay in this example because I saw that their jungler was low and their mid laner died. If their mid jungler top dies at any point as you are pathing, you should just go back to lane. I say grubs are overrated because even if you do have the opportunity to rotate, it's sometimes just not worth it. In lanes where you have prio and have been hitting the enemy tower for most of the game, it's better to secure first tower and get the extra gold. In this example, Karma can rotate to grubs but decides to stay because our tower is low and this is the correct play. I think it's only really worth it to rotate to grubs if all the conditions are met and your lane state is even. An important reminder that if the enemy support is rotating to grubs incorrectly, you need to punish them by by shoving the wave and diving the AD carry. In this example, their bot lane shoves in their wave, Nautilus recalls and has tier 2 boots, so he goes to contest Fiddlesticks at Grubs because he walked past Scuttlecrab Vision. Fiddle is able to secure Grubs before Nott rotates and we see him on a ward so I immediately go back to lane to push it so we can dive. Nott shows himself again topside so I look to trade with Ezreal even though I know it's a bad trade for me and then hard shove the wave. We have a big wave crashing and Ez is low so it's an easy dive for us. Nott should have immediately went back down after Grubs were taken so this could have been avoided. Nautilus basically threw their lead bot for no reason which was potentially their win condition. Ezreal not only loses about 2 waves but we get 2 plates and his mental is now boomed. A quick reminder to all my support players, sometimes in games you don't need to roam if your bot lane is winning hard. There are good moments to rotate to grubs, but it doesn't happen too often. You need to be smart about how you do it, and assess that decision based on value and wave states. I want to start off the vision tips and tricks portion with one of my aha moments that helped me break through to Challenger. Thinking about the enemy's perspective relative to what they can see on their map will elevate your gameplay to the next level. As a simplified example, you never want to show the enemy that you're recalling if you can because you lose a lot of potential pressure on the map. Here, right after Nautilus recalls, Sivir walks up because she knows that he's gone. Let's look at this from a scenario where Nautilus hides his recall in a bush. Now, Sivir can't walk up to farm because she doesn't know if Nautilus recalled, is sitting in a bush, or even looking to gank mid. You are putting pressure on their AD carry and mid to guess if you're taking any of those options even if you did recall, and they have to respect that because they can get engaged on and die if you hypothetically did stay. The Sivir and her mid laner will lose out on potential minions because they can't walk up freely anymore. You are able to create this pressure if you are very mindful about showing yourself to the enemy. Looking back to the grub clip, you might have missed it, but I purposely pathed so I won't get spotted by the enemy minions when I'm rotating back to bot lane. It's these very subtle movements that make a huge difference because you aren't giving the enemy information about where you are and now they have to guess which creates a lot of pressure on the map. If you constantly think about the enemy's perspective and your movement, I guarantee you that you will see the game in a whole new way and become a better player. To wrap up the vision section, here are some quick fast tips. If you know your team is going to secure the void scuttlecrab, don't use your red trinket because when it dies, it reveals the area around it for enemy wards and reduces them to 1 HP. On the flip side, if you know the enemy is going to take the Void Scuttle Crab, wait for the enemy to kill it before throwing down wards, otherwise it's just a waste. Final tip, be mindful on how you place wards in bushes. There's a big difference between this, this, and this. Try to put your wards at the edge of bushes so you get more vision. That's it for this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two and can implement a lot of the things we talked about into your games. I have other educational series if you're interested in that, which will be linked here. Thank you guys so much for watching.